thank you for the privilege to be your children. We thank you for the privilege of your word, having that, the freedom to read it here in the state. And Lord, we just pray that you will speak to Julian this evening. Make this subject more clear in our minds, Lord, as we live in this world of so much devastation and destruction. Lord, we know there's an answer. We know you have an answer. And we pray that you will help us understand more clearly this evening. For we ask these things and just pray to speak to her, Juliana, tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, how are you guys doing today? Good. 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 Well, God bless you all, and thank you for coming. Um, well, um, yesterday I was singing a song, you guys. Um, Gambia Man, which is a Spanish song. Wait, maybe that's really? Good? Okay. And I thought I was going to give you an translation. Well, Found <laughs> it. Okay. Found it. Okay. It says, Change me, Holy Spirit. So, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. I want to be new. I want to be a new cup to be molded by your hand. I want to be and I want to do in my life your will. Come, Holy Spirit, come control my life. Come, Holy Spirit, throw my soul of you. Throw my soul. That was the song I was singing yesterday. the translation. And there's new people that didn't came yesterday. I could sing it again. Um, no. Come, <laughs> man. Organization survey 
Americans to find out what they thought of England. Even though the country, like so many others around the world, grows more secular every, for every passing year. Amazing. 77%, yes, yeah, 77, 77%, um, is told and they believe angels exist. And one of every five that has personally seen an angel or knew someone who has. So, who's seen an angel again? Huh? I did too. It was just a nice experience. It was wow. But I was like in my house and seeing this little, little glow. I was like, what is that? It was amazing. I was really, wow. I was surprised. It was wow. This is awesome. You know, I was really enjoying it. It's really cool. Anyway. <laughs> well, Dr. Bill Graham, just one Christian author, he has written the best selling book about angels. How about you? Do you believe in angels? Yes? Yes. Well, you guys know um, in the Bible what um, another um, name for angels are? No? No? They're called stars. So, like, you know, in prophecy, they talk about stars, they talk about angels. So, you know, remember that. <laughs> That's really useful. <laughs> okay. Do you think that maybe you've personally seen an angel in human form um, sometimes in your life? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. What do you know about angels? Do you think it's important to know about angels? Not really. Yeah? No? Yes? <laughs> angels are involved today, like in vocabulary, like angel food cake, um, angel hair pasta, um, well. Like in the Christmas tree, they put an angel, right? Angels are everywhere. They have pictures and stuff about it. There are angels, like, you know, I guess yeah, you said it everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And this is angels, as evidence. Mankind is so caught up in searching for the supernatural. And that's really true, you know. You think angels are supernatural. Like, okay. They're real, though. <laughs> you know, they're real. Okay, what does the Bible teach about angels? The Bible mentions angels many times. In Genesis 32, there's in Genesis 32 different appearances of angels. First, angels are real, not made for these faces. The Bible says in Psalm, okay, Psalm 103, 20, 21. Bless the Lord, his angels who exist okay. in the streets, who do his will, heeding in the voice of his world. word. Okay. <coughs> Bless the Lord, you have angels who see and sing, who do his will, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you the host or angels, you minister the angels of his who do his sight. Second, angels were created to worship and praise God. Amen, right? Amen. Amen. Third, to experience joy in worship. Fourth, being of dazzling brightness, exceeding strength. So, you know, imagine being so beautiful. Like, you know, really beautiful. <laughs> well, um, someone told me, a really good friend of mine said, when he was singing, um, there was somebody else singing out here in the altar, and he was just walking around, and he was praying and stuff. And he said he felt a presence, okay, like he saw him, but he didn't dare to look. So he was like, okay. And then when he turned around to see um, his own friend, he was crying. And he's like, what's going on? He's like, I just seen an angel right beside him when he was singing. So you know how amazing is that? You, that's like really amazing. I would love to see, you know, I thought that's going to but a really big angel, you know, that would be nice. <laughs> but anyway, the Bible describes good and evil evil. In 2 Corinthians 11, 14, it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself can turn himself into an angel of light. The battle of the throne of heaven, the battle between good and evil, the Bible describes the battle in the universe, the battle for the throne of God. Um, come with me into the center of the universe. And, um, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I don't think the video is showing. 
fine. God is good, right? Todo el tiempo. Todo el tiempo. Dios es bueno. Amen. I like it. <laughs> tiempo. Todo el tiempo. Amén. Rejecting God's authority and God's law. He wanted to be in his own God. He takes his opinion. 
thinking about God solving well. Lucifer then wasn't breaking some obscure rule. He felt again the majesty of the heavens, the Creator. He made his choices to be part from God's will and set his opinion about, about God's authority. He um, frequently proclaimed himself as another God and sat for the throne of the universe. The reason for the war on heaven is because there was a first war, I mean, on earth. Sorry, I mean, rewind that. <laughs> the reason was the war on earth is because there was a first war in heaven. Then on earth was the same as it was in heaven. Like Lucifer, we sin when we live apart from God's will. We sin when we place our opinions and our will above God's will. The stakes are high, the universe is at risk, the cosmic struggle for the um, control of the universe. Why would God create a being like Lucifer with the captivity to choose to um, rebel? Why didn't God program Lucifer to never rebel? We would never have, you know, um, now. If God never made him, we would be all perfect, right? True. No way. If you take away the power of choice, you take away the ability to love. Right? Yes. Love can never be forced. It, um, it must be chosen. If you take away the ability to love, you take away the opportunity to be happy. Happiness is based on choice. Okay. Suppose um, I program a child on a computer and take screws out of his head and put a new chip, okay? And the child goes, hello, I want to be obedient to school. And the robot child with the robot arm gives me a hug and kisses me with like an iron lip. How many want a child like that? Like a robot child? No? Uh, I don't want a child like that, you know? Like, go away, and it's all following me. I'm like, no! <laughs> Well, all you prefer a spontaneous, dirty jean, hair, flying chin running around your house. You guys want that? <laughs> it's kind of fun, you know, you could. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want a child to obey because they're forced to, do you? I don't think so. Neither did God. God created his angels and modern models of perfection. One angel covered God's throne. Choose the Bible against God. The Bible describes the result of that rebellion. Bible says in Revelation 12, verse 7, and war broke out of out in heaven, mind you, and the angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and the angels fought. There was a battle in heaven. Some angels sided with Lucifer. Others believe God lost for a true existence. There's a battle in heaven. So you just imagine that, okay? How okay? Let me ask you a question. Um, how many of the angels went down for Lucifer? Three percent. One third. Yes. Good. Yeah, I've noticed. Good. So, how many were there in heaven? Four. <laughs> 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 the Bible describes the conflict in Revelation 12, 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent called the devil and Satan. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. 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 Satan is the Remember what I said? The angels are like, are on all the names of stars. See? See? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Another name. <laughs> but anyway, if one third angels were the sea, are you strong enough to fight the devil alone? No, we're not. We're not. Not at all. Okay. In this conflict, Jesus cast out Satan out of heaven. Goodness, every time Jesus meets um, Satan, Jesus or Michael, 
wet and fainted the dragon loose. And it's unhealthy, um, Michael was playing the dragon. Amen, right? Okay. How did um, the earth get involved in the um, cosmic conflict between good and evil? The Bible says in Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Some imagine Satan with horns and a tail, with pitch, forest, even fire. Wait. Who imagines that? I don't know if you see some cartoons. I don't want to see cartoons. I don't watch TV. But um, you see that, you know, with the devil with the horns, like, ah, you know, they live in the, um, the center of the, um, the world. What's that called? I forget what's that called. You know, <laughs> the middle of the world, inside the court. Yes, yeah, so it's called, I guess, it's four, and he comes out of there. That's, That's like a big lie. <laughs> a really big lie. Well, Satan is not, you know, he doesn't live there at all. He was a beautiful being, you know, bright and beautiful. Satan was a beautiful being. He 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 was a beautiful being. To this earth. And Revelation tells us, warns us, therefore rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell in them. Go to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great water, because he knows that he has but a short sure. time. Devil is cast out from heaven to this earth. Did God create earth as a dumping off place with Satan? No. God has. Problem with Satan. Was that the reason God created this earth? Um, I don't think so. What does the Bible say? Nothing is more than the truth. The Bible says that the earth was created perfect. The air was fresh, clean, the waters were pure. Genesis 1 28 says Adam and Eve would have gone to dominion over the fish, the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air. And over every living thing that moves on the earth. Adam, not Satan, was given authority over the earth. Adam, the prince of this land, Satan came to the garden as the great deceit. Why did not God pro program Adam and Eve mind against the deceit? You ever guys wonder about that? I don't know if you guys did. That's <laughs> Well, Satan changed the government of God to unjust. He said God's law was unfair, vicious, and um, arbitrary. If God had not allowed Satan to us to tempt Adam and Eve, to tempt Adam and Eve, Satan would have said, "God is afraid. I know my way is best." And then you hear his laugh, "Ha ha ha ha!" <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> Um, a loving God gave Adam and Eve freedom to choose. God allowed Satan to come to the garden. Okay, remember, he allowed him to come to the garden. God limited Satan one tree, then the whole world. And God warned Adam and Eve to stay away from that tree. And God did all he could to protect Adam and Eve. He entered Satan's ground. And there, he tempted. Satan said, has God and he said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? In Genesis 3, 1. Hasn't God given you the fruit of every tree? He responded to these words in Genesis 3, 2, um, 3. She said, we may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden. God has been good to give us um, abundance to all the earth and all the seeds. And okay. um, there he goes on. But the fruit of the seed, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, leave it, and die. Right? Okay, how, how, um, how is he going to die? Physically or spiritually? Spiritually. Spiritually. Good. That is another Good. Okay, it's a simple choice. A tree in the center of God is not a difficult test, right? And it wasn't really that difficult. 
But God said, clearly eat of all trees. But God said, don't eat of any tree. And the sense of the tree should not eat the tree in the center of the garden. That's mine. That's what God said. God's selection of the tree was arbitrary. No doubt in the basis of his command. Tree, the tree was a poison. God had for loyalty, obedience, and allegiance. He was stunned to listen to the serpent contradict God. So, let me stop right there for a moment. How does Satan tempt his feet? Lines are. Right? And you know what that on said when he used? Um, no, no, no. There's no group of people that um, use it as puppets. Um, call a medium. Yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No? Yes, no? Well, a medium. Okay. Let me explain this. <laughs> okay, a medium. Okay. Um, what they can use was a snake. And he kind of gave the snake, okay? And he um, tempted Eve, right? Well, I just lost what I was thinking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to continue. To the serpent, the serpent, Satan said in verse 4 and 5, and the statement said to the woman, You would not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Lucifer, what is to be like God? To um serve to serve God's will, to make law, to not obey God's law, to command allegiance, to, to not be obedient. Satan contradicts God. You will not surely die. He said to Eve, You will make your own rules. Oh, I'm like God. I do what I do. You can be your own God too. That's the same to eat. Do what you want, or if you want to eat of that tree, go ahead. Something Ethan is eating the forbidden tree. No, it's not. It was far deeper. Ethan is rejecting God and supreme authority. Her sin is rebellion against God, placing her beside the love of God's will, rejecting God's authority. The devil is a deceiver. He promised joy. Sin does not bring joy. Sin brings guilt, shame, and fear. Jesus caught Satan, the father of all lies. In John 8:44 it says, He is the liar and the father of it. He lies to Adam and Eve, lying to every man and woman now. Romans 6, 16 says, do you not know what to whom you present yourself slave to obey? You are the one slave who you obey. Whether of sin to death or the obedience to righteousness. Before Adam and Eve sinned, the princes of God's kingdom, God had given dominion over the earth. When they sinned, they became slaves. Slaves to another master to sin. Results of sin is manifest to children in our generation. Adam and Eve left the garden in shame and sorrow. Adam and Eve did rebellion against God. And what were the effects of this fall? Yeah, I know the effects of this fall. Okay. Joy, gladness, and happiness isn't the place where sorrow, pain, tears, disappointment, and death, right? Mm -hmm. yes. A manifest world. That God gave perfectly holy, now in the deep soul. Heaven was a planet in rebellion. Have you ever walked under the stars at night? Yes? Yes. I used to, I used to sit down and look at the stars. <laughs> and, I don't know, some people cry, why God? If you're so good, why is the world so bad? Don't you hear some people say that, or maybe yourself to say that too? Reason there is sorrow on earth is our planet is in rebellion. Reason there is death on earth is our planet is separated from the source of life. Reason we cry, our planet is separated from 
God. All have sinned, and they came too short of the glory of God. This plan shows effects of sin. There is famous, greed, lust, selfishness, self um, sin, heart, sorrow, and death. We see, we see it in the such fifth course of nature. What did God do when Adam and Eve sinned? Did he walk away and abandon this panic and rebellion? No. God is not responsible for evil. Not at all. Or stop suffering at all. Okay? No suffering. Okay? Jesus' disciples wonder, if God is so good, why is the world so bad? The response Jesus told us the story of the sower. Jesus said the sower sowed only good seed. Jesus said the tears or evil um, sorrows or evil so, um, sorrows are sprung up in the field. Then Jesus added Matthew 13, 28, um, 27, 28. So the third, the first servant. The servant. Sorry. <laughs> so, so the third. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so ready of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didn't thou didn't not thou sow good seeds in thy field? And what from whence then hath its its tears? He said unto them, Any an enemy has done this. Jesus is the householder and sowed good seeds to create a perfect plan. Through Satan, the world is plunged into sickness, sin, and disease. I don't even pass through the, um, the deception. Sorry. Deception. Hope I say that right. And the sad can be independent from God. It's to better against all authority, including God. Suffering and death is not God's doing. The result of Satan's rebellion is forces of evil. Jesus taught that Satan is responsible for all things. One that Jesus healed a woman that was ill for 18 years. Imagine that, 18 years. Sick. I forget what it was. What was she was sick of some blood, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. It made your fears angry, you know, when she when he healed her. Um Christ has performed a miracle on the staff. In response, Jesus said, in Luke 13, 16, so ought not of this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loose from this bound on Sabbath day. Woman has been ill, bound by Satan, for 18 years. Sickness is the result of the rebellion of mankind, the separation from God. This disease is first mixed in the laboratory of hell. All of the sick, sin, suffering, heartache, Death has always been Lucifer's fall, the plan, the fall on this plan. Would God destroy this rubble planet? Mm-hmm. Would he? Yes. No. Not yet. Exactly. God has a plan. Jeremiah 31 tells us about our God. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness, I have done you. And the earth is that in dark shadows, and death comes. The wages of sin, of rebellion, is what? Death. Exactly. What would God do? God said, I have a plan. I will bring you back. What was the plan? Yes, Jesus. God said to Satan in Genesis, Why you have bruised the heel of this woman? One of her descendants would bruise their head. The promise of the Messiah was given in Genesis 3. When Adam and Eve sinned, God said, I will not abandon this sin, but I will promise a Savior. He promised a way of escape, grace. Jesus' grace is always greater than our sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, God had a plan in the appointed time. <coughs> The Messiah will come and be born in the womb of a, in the womb of um, Mary. Due to Adam's being sin, the earth is placed under a death penalty. Christ will reverse the death penalty. Give us a new life. Okay? Oh, you know. 
God's plan for Adam and Eve would be to live forever and never die. Right? That was um, Adam and Eve's plan. Well, God's plan, but but they said that tax on human race. They became um, they became the promise of the Messiah. I say, I would love that. You know, I love that word. Our Savior. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Our Savior. I want you guys to say it. Oh, you got to like kind of sneeze. Come on, one, two, three. Our Savior. Amen. That's good now. Okay. And the angel told me that he would save people from their sins. Jesus faced Satan's temptation head on. Jesus succeeded where Adam failed. Jesus resisted when Adam um, Adam yielded. Jesus overcame the temptation of Satan. Jesus reached out the lost world, like one lost sheep. Remember the story Jesus told, suppose the, uh, the shepherd had a hundred sheep and one is lost? Mm -hmm. You guys remember that story? Yes. yes. What was, um, what was, uh, what will the shepherd do? He mm -hmm. would find the one lost sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus had 99 world loyal to him. He would have destroyed one lost rebel. Level world, but he? Mm -hmm. Nah. Genesis demands it to be restored. God's love redeemed one rebellious man. And Luke 19 10, for the love for the Son of Man had come to see and to save that which was lost. Punishment of rebellion is death. Christ lived a perfect life, and we should have lived. He faced Satan for you and me. He might in my faith. In the hill cross south, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible says in John 3 17, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. It is not saying saving one or two people, right? Mm -hmm. It's saving everybody. God he wants to save everyone. But a penny that is doomed to eternal destruction. Okay. What are we going to do there? <laughs> but anyway, when Jesus died, it was to redeem this planet. The greater act of love and the universe shouted, I love you so much to let you go. Notice the Bible says in Hebrews 2 14, and such more, then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the, in the things that through that he might destroy him who had the power of death that is. The power of death has been broken. The earth has been redeemed in Jesus Christ. The devil would do anything to keep you from knowing that. So, you know, open your eyes, okay? Open your eyes. <laughs> Christ's ultimate victory is settled, settled on the cross. It was sealed for eternity. He offers that vision to all who come to Notice in Isaiah 49, um, yeah, 49, 15. Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. So, your name is in your hands, okay? Even a mother may forget her child. I will not, I will not forget you, Jesus said. I have inscribed your name in my hands. We live in a world of suffering. So, um, chemotherapy for cancer, um, policy, um, disease, war, accidents, drugs, you name it. We cry out, God, don't you care? Jesus says, I suffered pain. I hung on the cross. I know how it's like to suffer pain and sorrow. Your name is written in the palms of my hand. When you suffer arthritis, I know what that's like. When you're lonely, I know it's like to be betrayed. So imagine that everything you're um, experiencing right now, Jesus, you know, that's he felt true. the same thing. So that's, that's really surprising. You know, sometimes you're like, I don't think nobody feels the way I feel, but he did. He's been betrayed. He's been lied to. Hit. All these things, okay? Yeah.
Which one? Anyway, honey, maybe you should choose you know, the baby. And it talks about it. We need the honey. Honey, you better go. Tom, got on the thing, went down to the same place, in that time. That night, he received his check. And as he came off the stage, he had a telegram. And the telegram said, you are a proud father of a lovely baby son. But your wife has died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. He got on the train, tears flowing down his face. He felt guilty about leaving her alone that night. He rushed back to Chicago, went to the hospital, only to learn that his son had also died. Mm -hmm. That precious little baby, and Tom went through the terrible depression and discouragement and left his music and week went by, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks, depressed, discouraged. Then he sat at the piano, began to play a little tune. A tune began to come to his mind and began to put, you know, his pen on the paper and start to write. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on and let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I am born. Through the storm, through the night, lead me to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows, dear, the precious Lord, linger my linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear me cry, hear, hear me call. Hold my hand as I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. The only way to survive the battle between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, is taking your hands to Jesus. Right? Amen. Amen. We do not battle against flesh and blood, but against evil power. The power of Satan is too strong. The power of the evil one is too great. Amen. Yes. I put a weakness in my heart. For when I'm weak, Jesus is strong. Amen. When Satan is strong, Jesus is more strong. So that's awesome, right? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Tonight, would you like to pray with me? As we, you know, bow our heads, I'm going to be praying my knees. You got one to talk to me. And if you want to pray about something, Say right now, any response to anything. You know, there's a great battle between good and evil, and you could have started to stop it yourself. But tonight, you want to say to Jesus, I want to say this. Amen. Mm -hmm. 